What's up? Welcome to Becoming a State National. I am not an attorney and by no means is this legal advice. I'm just some guy who's regurgitating information I came across that seems to make sense. So do what you will with the information you get from this, but I find it pretty interesting. So this is part one of common law remedy to beat traffic tickets, putting the law on your side. It's a free ebook. It's free to download and uh, free to share. And I have to go to traffic court here pretty soon. And I've never been, so I've been researching and I came across this. There's a lot of great information, so let's get into it. The subject of traffic infractions and the citations that can follow are relatively recent development in the course of social rules law and rule lawmaking over the past several hundred years. It has only been within the past 100 years or so, since the invention and implementation of the automobile in societies, that this phenomenon has occurred. The problem with these so-called laws is that not one of them has ever been passed into public law. They are private law. Why is that? Because they would infringe on the constitutionally protected rights of the people, and therefore cannot be made part of public law as that law was originally conceived in America. Statutory law jurisdictions, where private law has been legislated, written down, and passed into effect in affecting only a certain circumstance that people find themselves in, have over time been the source of the majority of these laws in this regard. It becomes incumbent upon the individual to know the difference and significance between public law and private law in order to ascertain when or even if a law may be applicable to him personally. Most of these social rule laws were written to protect people from unjust circumstances and in many instances are justified in being enforced. Anyone who breaks a rule of law that is recognized by both statutory and common law jurisdictions should certainly expect to have to answer for their misdeeds. However, not every infraction carries with it a cause which violates another person's rights or property. Such incidents are often referred to as victimless incidents, yet they are treated by the legal system that most of us are familiar with as though they were an actual victim who was violated. How can this be? when there is no actual cause of action to be decided. In other words, no one putting forth an actual claim upon which relief may be granted, and yet these cases get adjudicated every day with hardly anyone contesting them. There is no doubt that municipalities and states are raking in large revenues based on people's ignorance of the law and how it works in matters involving traffic citations. In the case of citations for speeding, only about 3% of these tickets are actually contested. This means that 97% of people pay up, and the legal system counts on this low number of contestants for ex explicit, <laughs> I can't even say that word, sake since the courts are already overwhelmed with legitimate litigation. And because most people today have become conditioned to be ignorant of their rights, the answer to how the legal system gets away with being able to charge people with and prevail in cases in which there's no actual victim has to do with a little known fact. This fact is not taught in driver education courses or anywhere else in the education system and is therefore little known by most people. And the fact is when you sign the application form in order to obtain a driver's license and later the actual license itself, what you are agreeing to is in essence known as an adhesion contract, which is in a classification of contract known as quasi-contract. Quasi means as if, or in a sense or manner, seemingly in part. In other words, a contract in name only, but not a lawfully enforceable contract. In essence, on the face of it, you agree to abide by the traffic codes and statutes put in place by the supervising authority in exchange for obtaining the license. The driver's license provides one with permission to use the roadways for a commercial purpose. Otherwise, it would be unlawful for one to carry on one's commercial business on the public thoroughfares without such permission and adherence to the published regulations. When you are not using the roadway for a commercial application, you are within your rights to travel without obstruction by the state's regulatory rules. And herein, 
is where the state takes advantage of your ignorance of commercial law. There are people who, when asked for their license, registrations, and insurance, and they are not acting in commerce, provide their passport as the authorization to travel outside of commercial activity. To hand over the driver's license without stipulating a condition like, this is for competency only, not for identification, is a prima facie on the face of it, indication that the driver is driving in commerce. A conscientious reader will look into the fact regarding the use of a passport before attempting to use it in the real world. People who know what they are doing have been known to be left alone on a traffic stop when first displaying their passport rather than their driver's license. By the same token, if you say a farmer and you are hauling hay in your pickup truck on a public roadway in order to deliver to a customer, you are assumed to be acting in commerce and must display a driver's license when asked to do so. The point being that there are occasions when people are acting in commerce, even though there may be other occasions when they are not. Adhesion contracts are a standardized contract form offered to consumers of mostly government goods and services on essentially a take it or leave it basis without affording an applicant a realistic opportunity to bargain the terms. Under such conditions, that person cannot obtain the desired product or services except by acquiescing in form of to the contract, which in this case allows him to act in commerce with limited liability. A distinctive feature of adhesion contract is that the weaker party has no realistic choice as to its terms. When you allow the officer at the roadside to see your license and registration, you are in essence testifying against yourself, providing prima facie on the face of it, evidence that you have contracted with the state to follow its rules of the road after you realize oh, rules of the road. After you realize what you've done, it can almost seem hopeless to try to fight this. However, this is far from being true. As bad as this may appear at first glance, there are ways to overcome these presumptions of law in order to bring the law onto your side. You just have to know how to use the law, common law, in order to overcome the law of corporate rules, statutes, and receive a fair and just outcome. That's what this small book is about. Once you know and understand a few important principles of law and how they are used, you can effectively put an end to these baseless nuance infractions or nuisance infractions that may trouble you from time to time. At this point, it should be pointed out that it will be to the reader's benefit to read this document all the way through to the end first before attempting to arrive at any conclusions about the information being disclosed and in any of the sections to seek out clarification of any words or ideas that you become un that become unclear that you become unclear about before proceeding on with your reading. It is of the utmost importance that you understand the meaning and implication behind every sentence in this document, because when dealing with law, the law works to eliminate any ambiguity within individual presentation. This is to say, if you don't know what you're saying or the legal implications behind what you are testifying to in court, it could work against your better interests. Everything that a person needs to know in order to successfully apply it toward a nuisance traffic infraction has been painstakingly thought out and presented based on direct personal experience in this book. In other words, there are no quick and easy answers here beyond your competent understanding of the concepts presented and their application. You cannot just skim this information and expect to understand any of it. You will need to work for your understanding by paying attention to the details. In order to satisfy any doubts that may linger in your mind, you may have to supplement what you find here from other sources. As a matter of fact, you are encouraged to look up anything you read here that you think is doubtful or dubious in its assertion in order to prove, as much as possible, the truth of the assertion. Just understand that there may be instances where your proof may come only after you make a positive stand to uphold your rights in a matter. So that's the introduction. Um, it gets really good moving forward, but I really get what he's saying about make sure you understand what you're saying. Just don't 
recite stuff you hear on TikTok or YouTube or, you know what I mean? Actually know what you're saying. That way you don't look like a clown. So yeah, make sure to subscribe and look for part two.